taking the time. Well, thank you, Paul. And hello, everyone. It is my honor to join you all this evening. And as Paul said, my name is Amber Barnes, and I work for the Woodlands Township um, in the Environmental Services Department. And tonight, I'm going to share how the Woodlands became a Monarch Champion. So let's just start at the beginning. What is a Monarch Champion? It all starts with a wonderful organization called the National Wildlife Federation, or NWF, as you will hear me refer to it throughout tonight's presentation. It's a wildlife conservation group that began about 80 years ago with a mission to give wildlife a voice. And one way they do that is by working with communities to um, protect native habitat. They started a program in 2015 and um, called it the Mayor's Monarch Pledge. And that program was set up to recognize communities across the United States for their efforts in supporting the monarch butterfly population. Now in 2015, San Antonio was named the first monarch champion. I do have to give credit where credit is due. They have a wonderful um, community support system in San Antonio and a um, wide array of activities and festivals and resources over there. So if you're ever in San Antonio, then please be sure and check out what they have done as a monarch champion city. But give credit where credit is due. The program started in 2015. We came into the picture in 2017. So the Woodlands Township took the pledge in 17, and that kicked off our journey to becoming a monarch champion. 2017 is also the year when the National Wildlife Federation expanded this program to include communities in Canada and Mexico. And that was a huge step because that migration flyway for the monarch ranges all across North America. So kudos to NWF for going um, and including two other countries. So after we pledged, we were provided with a framework to guide our efforts in restoring and enhancing habitat for monarchs right here in our own community. That framework came in the form of 24 action items. And to keep our pledge active, every year we had to complete at least three actions and then report our progress back to the National Wildlife Federation. Tell them what we did, how we did it, provide documentation. So every year since 2017, we have repledged and we've um, taken on new action items every year on this journey. So that's how the process began. Some of you might be asking yourself, well, why? Why did the township want to pursue this designation? And that's really a great question. So to begin, the monarch is the state insect of Texas. Um, monarchs migrate through our great state twice per year. Um, you can see them at all different times of year, but we are directly in their migration path as they do go from Canada to Mexico each year. We're a very pivotal location within that. But monarchs, like all pollinators, need habitat. They use it to rest to refuel, to lay their eggs. And monarchs have seen a drastic decline in population from lack of habitat, um, as well as increased pesticide use and climate change. And that has led to the monarch becoming somewhat of an ambassador species, um, bringing awareness to this decline in habitat and really a call to action. And another um, pollinator that has also made a lot of headway in drawing attention to habitat loss are bees. Um, however, there's something about the, the beauty and the appeal of the monarch butterfly that's really made it shine as that ambassador. So we have a call to action and we have this program called Plant for Pollinators. And um, if you're not familiar with Plant for Pollinators, it's a wonderful program that the Woodlands Township created 
It provides a number of resources, including classes on creating habitat, native plant lists for bees, butterflies, and other pollinators, and we do some really great gardening events. These are all free resources that are offered through the Environmental Services Department, and more information about this program can be found on the website listed on the slide that you can view now. So we saw the Mayor's Monarch Pledge through NWF as an opportunity to guide us in our Plant for Pollinators program in making improvements throughout the community. Um, and, and so that's what we did. We um, looked at those 24 action items and we committed to doing all 24 action items. So I'm going to share some highlights of some of the things that we accomplished along our journey to becoming a Monarch Champion. So we started at looking within our own operations. Um, we were asked to make changes within our operations where needed, review our policies, and really look and possibly make changes at the way that we manage our public spaces. And um, everything was done with the intent of protecting and creating Habitat for Monarchs. So as we started with an internal look, um, the best place to start is with our board of directors. So they actually have made a proclamation to restore Habitat for Monarch Butterflies. And they do this proclamation annually. In fact, at last night's board meeting, Director Bunch and the directors present read the 2022 proclamation stating that April 27th, 2022 shall be recognized as Monarch Butterfly Day in the Woodlands. Um, I think a few of you there were, um, a few of you were there with us and got to witness that proclamation. And if you um, want to read the full proclamation, then I believe you can access that on the township website. But it's so important to get those um, board of directors or your mayor or whoever is your government agency behind you when you're trying to pursue such a really ambitious goal that is going to impact the community. And so we're very lucky that our board of directors had already um, stepped up and said, yes, this is a cause worth fighting for. So while we were looking at our internal operations, um, we had to work really closely with other departments within the township. It's not just all going to fall on the shoulders of the Environmental Services Department. We spent time with our natural resources staff, um, our parks superintendent, our trail specialists who are out in the George Mitchell Nature Preserve, and a number of staff that manage the contracted landscaping services. Um, maybe you know that we don't do all of the landscaping ourselves, so we're working with these third-party agencies to take care of our community. And so there had to be a lot of communication in how we're managing our property. And we had to evaluate all of that during this process. We reviewed mowing and planting programs for our public spaces. So our parks and the median to right of ways and other areas throughout the community that we are able to oversee. And there's really good news around that. Prior to this process, the Woodlands Township had already implemented many practices to protect habitat. Um, that's very evident just by driving through the community. You know, we are a um, densely forested um, community, and, and a lot of that has been um, guided by the people who have um, seen, seen our community grow throughout the years and um, have allowed us to continue to preserve as much of the habitat as we, as we can. Um, and one very visible example that I um, can share with you all on how we are protecting and creating habitat in those public spaces is through our wildflower and revised mowing program within our medians. So the township has an expansive annual seeding program. 
which is evident about this time of year. I'd say spring from about mid-February through the end of April. Um, we adjust our mowing schedule to allow wildflowers to bloom um, on many of the rights of ways and the medians and our parks, um, numerous areas throughout the community. And if you um, had the opportunity in the last few months, and I hope you did, to drive down Research Forest, Groban's Mill, Gosling, 242, you would have seen some beautiful blooms this year. In fact, we have a map that highlights a few of the major roadways that we do this wildflower seeding and, um, and uh, mowing schedule. Now this is not completely inclusive. This is just a small snip of some of the work that we do out there in those public spaces. Um, but what I wanna point out is that we have um, areas in our community where we specifically seed blue bonnets. Everybody loves a blue bonnet. Um, Rob Fleming Park is known for its blue bonnet field and we want to spread that beauty throughout the community. There are also areas around town where we spread a uh, native wildflower mix. And there are also areas around town where um, we continue our mowing program. And that's something that we've had to learn to balance and is constantly being adjusted is how do we create habitat and work with this native landscape while also adhering to the um, aesthetic that we want to provide for our residents. And so it's a fine balance. And like I said, this map is not all inclusive of all the work that goes on out there. It's just a little snapshot. Um, this was a map that was uh, quickly passed to me a couple of years ago when we were inquiring about um, where some of those areas were. And so it's a great resource. But what I wanna point out is that with all those medians and parks and along the pathways where we have adjusted our mowing schedule and allowed those wildflowers to bloom each spring, we're providing an enormous food source for those emerging pollinators every spring. So think of the um, monarch butterfly, which is in Mexico, and then in the spring starts its journey north and it's passing through and we have just provided this buffet for it to stop and dine on its way. We also do a, um, a mowing, uh, a second mowing period, um, a mowing abatement period, I should say, in the fall um, where we allow our wildflower seeds to germinate. And um, if you are interested in um, learning more about the um, variety of wildflowers or locations of wildflowers that we put out there, you can always reach out to our natural resources department. Um, we've got a number of staff who would be thrilled to talk to you about that ongoing um, wildflower and mowing program. So within looking, uh, so with looking within the township operations, a number of actions required us also to focus on the creation of habitat. And there are a lot of projects that were created starting um, in 2017 um, through present day. And when we took the pledge, um, some of those projects were a conservation garden out at Wentwoods Park. Uh, it may look a little different now, but that was a really big project for us was to um, have this garden space in a public park that was filled with native plants and a great example for those in the community who are looking to see how they could incorporate these native plants into their own homes and, and gardens. We also had an Eagle Scout project that was created over at Reedy Pond Park. Um, that Eagle Scout project actually became a certified wildlife habitat and um, that scout did a wonderful job. Um, unfortunately, sometimes things just uh, don't last as long as we would like them to. And his effort was, was every bit um, earned in his hard work. Unfortunately, um, maintenance sometimes gets away from us. And so if you go visit that, you'll still see some wildflowers blooming, but it may not look like a um, well-manicured garden out there. And that's fine because the butterflies don't care how well manicured it is. They're just looking for something to eat. Some of the other habitats 
that we have created at different sites throughout the woodlands are, um, they stem from our community tree plantings. So every year in the early spring, we select a site in our community that's in need of some reforestation efforts. But we've taken it beyond just planting native trees, which many of them are a great host plant for our pollinators. But we have included um, native milkweed and native shrubs or plants, and we've been spreading wildflower seed. So the photos that are on the screen that I'm sharing with you, uh, the one in the top is out at the West Trailhead for the George Mitchell Nature Preserve off of Dr. Ann Snyder, uh, Ann Snyder Way. And we were out there planting native trees, but we also took a lot of milkweed out there and we planted a lot of wildflower seed. And if you go out and enjoy that trail system now, you'll see that there's a really diverse habitat that has been able to grow out there and it's buzzing with insects. Another location that we had some great success with, I believe this is in Creekside Park near the um, spindle tree area, uh, spindle tree pond. And you can see that there are a number of wildflower seeds that bloomed um, in the background off in the distance, there's a small sign that says no mow, wildflowers growing. And so when we create these habitat sites and public spaces, we treat it just the same as we do with that wildflower and mowing abatement program. We want to allow those wildflowers to bloom and we want to have those pollinators out visiting and give it ample time to go through a full bloom season before we bring in any mowers. This year in 2022, we went out to Meadow Lake Park in Panther Creek. Maybe some of you joined us, came out and got your hands dirty. And um, at Meadow Lake, we actually went in and cleared out an area, brought in native plants, brought in native trees and wildflower seed, and I've created a really diverse wildlife habitat right in the middle of one of our busiest parks. So if you get a chance, stop by Meadow Lake Park, You'll see the area that's cleared out and you'll see those native trees that are starting to bloom and grow. And you'll see some of those native plants. Um, we put uh, coral berry, spiderwort, viburnum, um, all, a whole variety, lantanas out there, salvias, inland sea oats. So we've really worked um, to take these public spaces and create a very diverse, habitat that not only is going to benefit the monarch, but will benefit um, pollinators, bees, and other butterflies, and at the same time support the other native wildlife that we have um, and that we share this community with. So we've done a lot of work to create habitat throughout the community. And um, as you can see from the photos, it's not just the township staff that comes out and creates that habitat. Uh, in fact, we don't have the manpower to do this all on our own. Uh, there is no way we could have reached this Monarch Champion goal without the hours given to us by the community in their volunteer efforts. And you weren't just volunteering with us. The National Wildlife Federation wanted to know what our residents were doing volunteering at our events, but also what they were doing on their own to create or protect habitat for monarchs. And the short answer is, y'all were doing a lot. Um, it made this a really exciting and enjoyable part of this process for us to go out and find out what the community was up to and um, work with you guys side by side to create even more habitat. Uh, one example are these schools. Um, so schools that had a garden or maybe were interested in starting a garden um, would reach out looking for support and it was a great opportunity for us to connect with them. Um, we've been able to provide education in a number of classrooms, um, even going out to some schools and helping them select the best site for their garden or talk to them about amending the soil or selecting the best type of irrigation for that site. And we can help them with selecting plants, providing plant lists, 
And at times we've even been able to help a few schools by providing some wildflower seed or some milkweed. A few of the schools that I know we did get the opportunity to work with have been Creekside Forest Elementary, Wilkerson Intermediate, Colson Tuff Elementary, and um, the Woodlands Prep School. So NWF wanted us to report as well on what efforts were going on in our community gardens. And thankfully, that was an easy one. As you can see by the photos, um, a quick visit to any of our community gardens, and we do have three, um, made it very easy for us to document the habitat that residents had created, um, whether it was in their own garden plot or in the perimeter. Um, there are a number of pollinator plants that exist within our community gardens. And some of you might be thinking, well, yeah, that makes sense. You're growing um, vegetables or um, whatever you have growing in your community garden plot may need to be pollinated. So it makes sense to plant those additional plants to draw in the pollinators. However, a lot of these gardeners, um, instead of growing um, edibles, vegetables and fruits, some of them just grow pollinator plants. And so our community gardens are just buzzing with activity. Um, and then one of my favorite photos is right there in the middle of the screen, that lovely monarch who just, you know, um, found the perfect, uh, perfect place to stop for lunch and enjoy a nice rest in our community garden. So we had a lot of fun highlighting the hard, but very important work that our community is doing, um, be it in schools or community gardens. Um, I believe even some churches um, reached out and shared the activities they had going on. Um, but this also going through this process gave us the opportunity to create new projects for the community. And um, our community really showed up to these new projects in a really big way. So I wanna highlight a couple of these projects that were created um, in part as part of this journey. So we have Milkweed for Monarchs, um, and that's a project that I'm excited to share with you guys. You may be familiar, but in 2019, a group of dedicated volunteers, mostly made up of members from the Heartwood chapter of Texas Master Naturalists, along with some staff from Nature's Way Resources, worked with us on an initiative to grow our own native milkweed. As I said, we call this project Milkweed for Monarchs. Milkweed is the host plant for monarchs and it is critical to their survival. Unfortunately, native milkweed is high in demand and at low in supply at times. And um, we thought, let's try and grow it ourselves. So we started by growing three varieties um, and the hope was that we would be able to grow a decent amount, give it away, and create more habitat. Now, if you've ever tried to grow milkweed, you may have found it to be a bit of a challenge. I definitely have. And we approached this by consulting with experts, working with the staff at Nature's Way Resource, doing our research. And still with that, we, you know, would be thrilled um, with whatever success we could get, but we were kind of prepared for, a, for maybe a slightly lower success rate. We were testing out some different theories. And then something totally unexpected happened. It worked. All of the, all of the stars aligned and this program really blew us out of the water. By the fall of 2019, and I believe we started this program in June, um, but by the fall, we had nearly 14,000 seedlings. It was amazing. Um, it was a lot of hard work and there is not a big enough thanks to go out to the volunteers who spent their summers outside watering plants and checking on these little babies for us, but it paid off. We had native milkweed to give away to our community at fall events. We sent multiple flats of milkweed to schools, churches, um, community gardens, and some garden clubs. That program was a 
huge success. And it really was due to the generosity of the staff out at Nature's Way Resources and those volunteers. Um, Nature's Way Resources provided the space for us. And as you can see, this project needed a lot of space. Um, they also provided resources and their staff's time to work on this project as well as guide those um, volunteers. So you might be wondering, does this project still exist? Well, yes, but not in the same format. Um, we were unable to continue this program in 2020 uh, due to COVID and some other reasons. And um, it forced us to kind of get creative with how we can provide milkweed to the community. So we've restructured it. Um, there is still a program called Milkweed for Monarchs, but last year, what we did is we gave out Grow Your Own Milkweed Kits. And we gave those out to residents with the hope that they would have their own success story by growing native milkweed at home. And those kits were distributed at a number of events last fall. So if you received a kit, planted it, then hopefully you saw something come up this spring. Um, but I will say from my own experience, um, some, uh, some patience is required. And if you um, are growing milkweed, um, it, it will take a year or two before you see it flowering. So hang in there, be patient. Um, but that program was really well received, um, both giving away the seedlings as well as the grow your own kits. And so we will continue to offer some way to give milkweed out to the residents and um, look for something coming from us later in the fall. Another project that um, came about on our journey to becoming a monarch champion is the Plant for Pollinators Village Challenge. Now, I'm sure many of you are probably familiar with this program because the Woodlands Green was a huge supporter of this. Um, but the program essentially is, uh, provides the opportunity for residents to register their pollinator garden with the Woodlands Township. And in doing so, they earn a point for their village. And the three villages with the most points receive a cash donation for their scholarship funds. And this program was made possible by support from the Woodlands Green and a local nonprofit called Project Pollination. So we started this program in 2020. And in that first year, we registered over 100 gardens. And so we did it again last year. And in 2021, we registered 120 gardens. And so you can still register your garden today. Um, the website that's listed on the slide has the regist uh, register your garden page. And so you can go on there and register your garden. And the um, data that we collect when you share your garden information with us allows us to really track the growth and the um, variety of plants that our residents are finding um, to be successful in their own gardens. And um, the photos that are on the screen were all shared by residents who registered their garden. And you can see that um, one of those photos is in someone's front yard, or, or maybe you can or can't see, but um, one of those photos is right there in the front of someone's yard. Um, the smaller photo in the bottom left corner of the screen actually comes from um, the Point HOA. And uh, we have a number of active gardeners in our community who've come and registered their pollinator garden and shared what is working in their yard. And it's been wonderful to see that program grow. So if you're interested in registering your garden, check out that website. We'd love to see what you guys are doing at your own home. So all this hard work, um, looking at our internal operations, engaging with the community, creating new projects to continue these um, habitat creation projects, um, it all paid off. In February of 2021, we submitted documentation on all 24 action items to the National Wildlife Federation for them to review. Took a few weeks of impatiently waiting to hear back, followed by a huge sigh of relief, and we were told that we had done it. We were officially a monarch champion, and we celebrated. Um, 
the board celebrated, our staff celebrated. Um, this was a community-wide effort and we were thrilled to receive this recognition. And you have to remember that this is a tri-national um, achievement. The program began in 2015 and when we submitted our application in 2021, there were already more than 800 communities that had taken this pledge. They were all working on any number of action items to save monarchs. So some had completed eight or 17 or three, and some had just started. But there are a lot of communities across North America who are all taking steps to help save monarchs. Um, within those communities and within the past seven years that this program has existed, we were actually the 10th community in all of North America to receive this designation. Um, and that's really something to celebrate. There is a lot of hard work being done out there. And we just happen to, um, to, to show it pay off in, in a way that um, not many communities had yet to achieve. And they're still working on it and they will get there. We just got there a little faster. So now there are more than a thousand communities across North America who have pledged to take action and um, many more to come behind us who will receive that designation. If you go to the um, NWF website, you can actually see what communities are actively working towards this designation. So what I wanna point out on this slide is a side-by-side -side comparison of the map on the left, which is the Mayor's Monarch Pledge, all the communities that have pledged, and the map on the right of the screen, which shows the monarch migration patterns. Now, you could probably layer them right on top of each other. They almost seem to be highlighting the same areas, which is really great news because what that means is that the cities that are in the migration flyway for the monarch are taking action. They're working to create habitat along this natural flyway where the monarchs need to find that food source and find that habitat. And so if you were to go to the website that is on the slide, the Mayor's Monarch Portal, you can um, actually zoom in and view every single community that has made the pledge. Um, maybe you're not from here and you're curious if the city that you grew up in or last lived in is actively working towards this designation. You can go online and find out for yourself. So if you zoom into the Lone Star Stakes, I'm sure you guys are all curious about this. You can see that our fellow Texans are doing their part as well. Um, I already mentioned that San Antonio was the first community to receive this designation. And there are a number of communities in Texas that slid in right before us and right after us. So some of the other communities that have achieved Monarch Champion status that I'm aware of um, is Arlington, Fort Worth, McAllen, I think McAllen was right after San Antonio, um, and Austin. Now, if you are looking at the large map that um, shows the state of Texas and our surrounding states, um, those orange dots indicate um, that the pledge has been renewed or is active for 2022. And if it's gray, it simply means that a pledge was made in a previous year. So then you zoom in a little bit further and see what our nearby neighbors are doing. Um, so in the greater Houston area, you see um, the Woodlands has an active orange dot because we are renewed for 2022. Houston and um, just out, that actually might be Sugarland um, that has an active pledge. And a number of cities who have pledged in previous years, doesn't mean they've given up or stopped pursuing this designation, it just means Currently, they're not active. So if you were to zoom in one further and you wanted to click on the, on the woodlands and see what we are up to, I do have to warn you when you click on our city, it doesn't, you know, bells and whistles and confetti and say, you found a monarch champion city. I wish it did. Um, they're just not there yet. 
Um, but you can click on our profile. And once you get onto our profile page, you can see right there on the left side of the screen where we are awarded our um, National Wildlife Federation Mayor's Monarch Pledge Leader. And that is essentially them um, giving us that achievement of a Monarch Champion. If you go through our profile, you'll see that for 2022, we have pledged to complete three action items. That's right, our work is not done. Um, we reach a significant goal, and that does not mean that we're stopping. Monarch habitat is still in decline, and they need our help and yours too. So if you're curious what the township is working on next, um, we will continue to do what we have been doing, and then some. We'll provide support and resources in the form of educational classes and community outreach. And we'll work to find or provide native plant and milkweed resources for the community. And we're gonna to continue to create more habitat. In fact, there are actually two projects that we are planning to break ground on this summer. So thanks to a partnership with the Woodlands Green and a generous donation, me, of funds raised back in 2020 by Colson Tuck Elementary's Race for Awareness, we are going to be converting part of the landscape at the Sterling Ridge Park and Ride into pollinator habitat. So our plan is to break ground uh, later this summer. Uh, we have to do a little bit of work on the site first, and we're going to be working in the northeast corner of the park and ride, and we're converting roughly a quarter of an acre into habitat. There will be some nice signage placed out there. And of course, the township will be doing press releases and marketing updates as that project gets underway. Uh, and this, we hope, is just the first of many similar projects. Additionally, the township is working on a project to create more habitat in partnership with Entergy. Um, there is an energy easement located in the 242 area where we have the um, opportunity to convert about a half an acre into habitat later this year as well. I mentioned earlier, our staff is not alone in this work. And so we need you to be a major player in this game. And if you're looking for ways to take action, I'm gonna go over four ways that you can help. So if you don't know where to start, please reach out, um, we can be your guide. We provide resources online and weekly blog posts to answer those questions that might stump you. Our staff is a knowledgeable resource as well. Uh, we offer gardening classes each spring and fall, as well as presentations on native wildlife, drip irrigation and rainwater harvesting, and even how to compost at home. I've got our website listed on an upcoming slide, so be sure to visit and check out our calendar of events and join us to learn something new. Now, if you've got the time, come volunteer with us. Depending on the time of year, we need help planting native trees, milkweed and seed. We also have volunteer opportunities to help out at events and provide education to members of the community. And if you're a gardener or you have some experience creating habitat, consider volunteering your time to help a neighbor get their pollinator garden started, or maybe work with a local school as a garden advisor. So here's my favorite way to get involved. Just go sit outside. Planning for pollinators is more than just building the habitat. You actually wanna see these pollinators in your garden. So you need to get outside and observe what's happening. Are you seeing bees? Are you seeing butterflies? If yes, that's great. But now we want to share and you can share that data and become a citizen scientist. There's an app that I like to use you may be familiar with. It's a free app called iNaturalist. You can also use it on your desktop but I use it to report pollinators as well as identify plants and insects and animals that I'm not familiar with. And when I report that data, iNaturalist can use it um, to track what activity is happening near me. If you're not familiar with the app, 
there is a tutorial on the Woodlands Township YouTube page. And I think I, um, I know you can access that through our township website. Um, we will also have an opportunity for you to get familiar with the iNaturalist app in June. So mark your calendar for June 20th through the 26th. The Woodlands Township will be celebrating National Pollinator Week, and we are hosting a week-long bio blitz. Um, and this is where we ask residents to record and share observations all week in an effort to track our pollinator populations. It's a really great way for us to measure the success of the habitat that we've created. And finally, the most important thing you can do for pollinators is provide more habitat. This means a space that offers food, water, shelter, and is free from chemicals. If you don't know where to start, please reach out to me. I've got lists of native plants. I can point you towards some great local plant nurseries, and I've got a lot of encouraging words just to get you started. So I'm going to just barely touch on the tip of the iceberg when it comes to planting a garden, but I wanted to throw in just a few tips on creating habitat. So once you've identified the planting hmm. site, your front yard, your backyard, um, the little strip along the side of your house, maybe it's at your church or your school or your business, um, then you wanna select some native plants based on that site. How much sun does it receive? How, um, how easy is water access at that point? Um, does it um, stay kind of wet or is it a really dry area? And then you wanna buy a variety of plants that offers spring, summer, and fall blooms. That's a year round blooming season. And don't forget the milkweed. Be sure to bring home about five to seven of each plant variety. And when you plant, um, plant in dense block uh, color blocks, it makes it a lot easier for pollinators to find that nectar source that they need. Don't forget, avoid those pesticides. So there's a lot of native plants that you can add into your habitat. Uh, the problem might actually come down to trying to find those specific plants at a nursery. Um, you can go online and find all kinds of lists, make those decisions, and then you walk in the door and they just don't have it. So um, this slide actually highlights some of the more commonly found natives that you might consider. Um, also categorized into year-round blooms. I've bought a number of these at some local nurseries, and I think you would have pretty good chances of picking them up. Now, um, you might not be able to find your fall blooming varieties just yet at a nursery, but your spring and your summer bloomings are probably out there. If you're looking for a more expansive list of native plants that you could add to your habitat, uh, we do have native plant lists, shrubs, and tree lists that are available on our Township Plant for Pollinators website, and we can help you find the best fit for creating the habitat that you want. So if you're just getting started with creating habitat, um, don't feel overwhelmed. Uh, maybe just start with a container garden or a small area. Um, with a container garden, it's really great. It gives you that versatility to move around, um, test out the different um, sun that that location is receiving, and um, move things until you find just that right spot. Or maybe you've got a small yard, or you only have a patio or a balcony. Habitat gardens are not limited in size. Um, if you put it out there, they will find it. But remember to provide those dense color blocks and a blooming plant for each season. I've highlighted some of my favorite native plants on this slide, um, one for each blooming season. And when I first got started into habitat gardening, these were the plants that I found in the nursery and I just bought a bunch of them and I planted them all over my um, front and backyard. And very, um, very shortly after I planted them, I started getting visitors. So those are a couple of my favorites. I just wanted to take a moment and shout out to them and highlight them for y'all. 
Most importantly, when it comes to creating habitat, especially here in the woodlands, remember that the township is in support of you creating that habitat. In fact, it's actually written into our residential development standards. And I wanna reiterate, habitat gardens are not restricted to your backyard. If you need guidance on how to create a front yard that is both pleasing to your neighbors, but also buzzing with bees and butterflies, um, we have a great resource on our Township YouTube page. Lauren Simpson has done a presentation for us. She is um, a pollinator gardener down in Houston who has transformed her front yard into a beautiful neighbor approved habitat garden right in the uh, right in the middle of Houston. So please, if you're looking for inspiration, go visit our township YouTube page and watch Lauren's video. You will be inspired and know that the township does support you having that habitat garden out in a visible space. So that nearly wraps it up for me. I wanted to share with you all some of uh, the resources that I had mentioned. Um, the National Wildlife Federation is not only a resource for communities wanting to take action, become a monarch champion, or take the Mayor's Monarch Pledge, um, but they also offer wildlife habitat certifications. So you can go to their website and certify your habitat. Um, and you can also certify um, with monarchwatch.org. They certify monarch way stations and have a number of resources on um, ways that you can support monarchs. And of course, you can visit our website, um, not only to get those resources that were mentioned as far as plant lists, but um, take a look at our calendar and see our upcoming events so you can come out and get more um, resources. And then um, before I turn it over for questions, um, I just wanted to say a really big thank you to the Woodlands Green um, so much of the work done to become a Monarch Champion came from the support of the community. And the Woodlands Green is one of our biggest champions. Um, beyond the partnership that the Green has with the township, um, the Green is constantly supporting our events and our classes. Um, Y'all provide volunteers for us and you sponsor a number of these activities that allowed us to achieve this um, designation. Um, so it's always a pleasure to work with such a group of um, passionate individuals and you know look look what we achieved together um, so the celebration is not uh, just for us it's it's for the entire community so i thank you all for um, letting me share um, our journey to becoming a monarch champion this is my contact information feel free to reach out at any time and um, paul do we have any questions no, uh, but as usual, I have a comment and, and I want to thank you for your kind words about the Woodlands Green. It's certainly one of my pleasures in life is, is when I joined that, that group and continue. I just wanted to say that uh, I've been doing this over the years, a lot of it because of the outreach of, of you and others, but uh, over the years, milkweed, lantana, turks cap, salvias, they're all what I've been impressed with was the, uh, not only the, the butterflies, et cetera, but the resilience that uh, in both of the last freezes, they all froze to the ground and they're all back just as strong as they ever were from, uh, from the roots up. So not only are they good for all those reasons, but they're also, you know, you don't have to replant. You just watch them come back from from what you thought may have been dead. And I also wanted to say that all the, all the uh, milkweed that I had came from the giveaway That's that you did. Uh, yeah, then, and I even had a few volunteers after that, but that was a, a wonderful program as well. I don't, if there's any, uh, there's one question is in roles for volunteers in the two large projects. Was, are you, I guess, referring to perhaps the, uh, the Sterling Ridge parking lot, et cetera? Say again, Paul. Well, I said the chat said, uh, 
will there be roles for the volunteers in the two large projects you mentioned? And I'm, I'm sure there is, but go ahead and expand on that. Of course. So um, we always say yes to volunteers. We're still in the early stages of those programs. So we are needing to do some preparation at both sites. But yes, we do plan to need some volunteers. And of course, we'll make sure to pass those opportunities along to the Woodlands Green. Um, but we'll also post any volunteer opportunities on the township website. And if you're um, not sure where to find those resources, just send me an email and I'll make sure that you get added to our um, volunteer contact list so we can let you know of any upcoming opportunities. Yeah, and I said I've been keeping an eye on the, the Woodlands Green websites. There'll be plenty of information about our participation in that. Um, before you leave, I would like you to talk about uh, the backpack birding. I'd love to talk about that, Paul. Yeah, just tell me about that one that you wrote about. Of course. So the Environmental Services Department recently launched a new program um, where we provide backpacks that have uh, some of the resources that we think are needed to get started in birding. Um, those include some binoculars, some birding guides, uh, birding checklists, some maps, and um, a few other resources that we throw in the backpack for you. So if you are a resident of the Woodlands Township, you can reach out to the Environmental Services Department or the information that's on the slide there and contact me directly and um, we will reserve a backpack for you. Uh, you can borrow it for up to one week and it is a free, um, free reservation process. So we just ask that you're a township resident. Um, we're loaning them out to adults. So if you um, want to take the family out and want to take kids out, we do have some kid friendly resources we can include as well. But we um, know there are a lot of great birding spots throughout the community, and we want to encourage you to get out there and explore them. And if you don't have those resources, we'll 